Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum. Last time, we made our way through the northern part of Mount Coronet and caught ourselves a new team member. My beautiful, beautiful Feebas, I am so happy to have you. It was not an easy time getting you, but man, it's just so beautiful seeing you down there in my bar of team members. And don't you dare say any of the mean things about it that the Pokedex entry calls it. It is beautiful, and its stats will argue with you until the end of time. It is in the eye of the beholder and in the eye of the technical aspects of the game. This time, we are here out on Route 216, just outside Mount Coronet, and we're gonna begin crossing the frozen tundra to our next destination, so let's get started. Even though it's not really so much a tundra as it is a canyon, but still, we're wrong with it. Got a peepee up, starting things off on a great note here. That is a really good item to get. And this route is dedi dedicated, divided up into a few regions. You got the middle region down there in the center, and you also have this upper region right here. There's things for us on each, so we're probably gonna be doing a bit of backtracking here to get all the way around. Thank goodness I didn't have an encounter on it. Got another item over this way, we got a full heal, and that guy up there. He's doing donuts on his ski, he looks like he's having the time of his life. I can't imagine that's very possible on a flat surface, but I could be wrong, of course. I haven't exactly grown up in the snowiest of regions, but that looks fun. I gotta learn how to ski if that's even possible, and that probably isn't. So, uh, snow. Your feet will sink into it, and you can't run, you can only walk. You also can't ride your bike at all in the snow, so we're kind of stuck moving a little bit slower than usual. To be ready to answer any call, to be ready to accept any challenge, that is the way of the trainer. I know she said a trainer, but it just sounded so much better with the trainer. It's like, that is the way of the samurai. Ace trainer Maria, who does not look like an ace trainer at all. Seriously, your hair color is black. It's like an outright requirement that to be an ace trainer, you have to have crazy hair. Where were you when you missed the seminar? Um. She is a trainer of interest, first one that we're seeing in a while. Not because of her gold look, but because of something else that she has. This is also our first instance of hail in battle. You're gonna be seeing that in every battle you encounter on this route. The only way around it is to use a weather eff effect of your own to override it. You probably don't have one of those on your team. Hail between turns will damage any type of Pokemon that is not ice type. You probably also don't have an ice type Pokemon on your team while coming to this route. I don't even remember going over any ice types and biomes other than, gosh, Regiice, and that's an event Pokemon that you probably don't have access to at all. I could be wrong once again, but still, it's just really an annoying weather effect. It does make Blizzard 100% accurate, which is really, really nice. You can buy Blizzard TMs in Veilstone City if you want to take advantage of that. However, can I just say how much I love this can I just say how much I hate this Rapidash? Hitting Supernova with Fire Blast. That is insult to injury, man. As I was saying though, can I just say how much I love Supernova, even though it misses its Fire Blast all the time, gets critted by things that really shouldn't have happened, gets frozen against boss Pokemon. Point is, it doesn't take damage against Tail. That's right, I got Magic Guard. I don't take damage from weather at all. But I do take damage from Fire Blast, even though I can't seem to cause damage from Fire Blast. Please don't burn me, thank you. That would have been even worse if I got burned there because that would have just halved my attack. I probably would have still knocked out this rapid edge, but still, that was kind of funny. Let's recover my whole one HP, gain my experience. Nope, I was hoping that would be the thing that would make Feebas gain a level. We maxed out Feebas's beauty in the last video, so I'm really hoping it's gonna get to evolve here. It'd be kind of sad if it didn't. And uh, this is the very reason why you want to fight Ace Trainer Maria. She has a pseudo widow on her team, something that is not part of any required battle and you definitely want to see for your Pokedex. Can also be, I suppose, a little bit uncommon outside of Candelave City, so there is that. You got a lot of defense. I'm just gonna go for Earthquake nonetheless. I know Woodhammer would do more damage, but I just kind of want to end this battle quickly before Bodhi takes too much damage, especially with that hail being additional chip damage every turn that I don't beat the pseudo widow. Good. Good. Bodhi, you are rocking it. Can this please be the one? Yes, level 20. Oh yeah, eat snowball, punk. <laughs> that is so non-threatening for an ace train. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness, if that beauty stat was not sufficient enough to make it evolve. I also like how the Feebas sprite is just getting tiny inside of like a donut. <laughs> That's funny to me. Here we are. It somehow got even prettier. I love it. Feebas evolved into Milotic. Ah, <laughs> uh, it still isn't gonna be doing much fighting, but I'm happy that we have it as a Milotic nonetheless. 
Just feels so good to have it evolve so soon after catching it for no consequence. Get a revive right there. Once again with the generous items, not complaining at all. Now, you are your required battle, I'm pretty sure. I think we want to backtrack through here. Yeah, once again, there's snow. This guy's not required. But I think... I think he has a pet Snover right next to him that is meant to troll me when I walk up right next to him because I didn't have a repel for two steps through grass. Thanks for that. I'm an elite battler, but the cold is my nemesis. You picked a really bad place to train, I have to say. Then again, I've always heard the saying that training against your weakness is the only way to train. This guy is Ace Trainer Blake. He is also a trainer of interest, having an Ambipalm on his team. Yeah. He also has a Porygon 2 on his team, so make doubly sure that you fight this guy. We're going to be fighting him and the required trainer on the main path, and while doing so, I say we get started on the encounters. I say get started because they are making up for lost time. We have not had a lot of new encounters in several areas, Oh boy, there are a lot more than you think there are in this general vicinity. First is Sneasel. This is outright one of the absolute best options for a physical sweeper you have accessible to you in the Platinum single player. Not only did Sneasel get a much needed evolution with some killer stats, outspeeding dang near everything, but also, in more recent games, Ice Punch is a bit of an elusive move to get on Sneasel unless you do some breeding and stuff like that. Not so in Platinum. In Platinum, there's that move tutor near Pastoria City who will teach it for just a few shards. The only downsides of Sneasel that I'd really say are that that Razor Claw needed for evolution is at the very end of our journey. And if you wanted to put Pursuit on it, you're not gonna be able to do that without breeding. So it might be a bit of an uphill battle. Oh, but he's so good otherwise. Second is the incredibly strange Snow Runt. And when I say strange, I don't necessarily mean in the good way. It's the counterpart to Ralts in being an alternate use for the Dawnstone and a new split evolution based on gender. Honestly, I'm pretty happy I used my Dawnstone on my Curly instead. You are given two options with this Pokemon, and the first of them is 100% awful. It's wait until level 42 so you can get Glalie, a pure ice type Pokemon with 80 in every stat. Pretty much any ice type Pokemon out there will do its job better than it can, because those stats are awful, and it's such a horrible reward for hard work, too, with how long it takes to get it. The second option is Frostlass, which only female snow runs can become if you use the Dawnstone. It has the unique type of Ice Ghost, and moves of those types give it some good type coverage. One fun option is that it learns Destiny Bond, has low defenses, and a lot of weaknesses. You can use this to your advantage, and I've personally done so before. It served me pretty well. I'd suggest Frostlass over Glalie, but you are going to have to treat Frostlass well like glass. It's very delicate, and it's not going to be exactly like Gengar by any means, so treat it like its own thing. And the last new encounter, Snover. All hail the Hail Summoner we were waiting for since Gen 3. Okay, no, seriously. It was a little bit odd that this didn't exist sooner. It has the nice advantage of 100% accurate Blizzard without a turn of setup. It also gets Wood Hammer at level 35. It is not lacking in powerful attacking moves. Fun fact, Blizzard in Hail, only in Diamond and Pearl, could hit through Protect and Detect 30% of the time. That's pretty amazing. And I'm very glad that they patched that out because that's really ridiculous as well. The problem with Snow Run, however, is its type. Snover has seven, that's seven weaknesses, including a quad weakness to fire. Plus it's slow and often going to get attacked first. Hail also only nerfs one attacking move in the entire game, Solar Beam. It's not like Rain where you nerf all fire type moves, no. Hail just simply doesn't do that and it really stinks for a Pokemon with this many common weaknesses. Due to it showing up so late in the adventure, it might be hard to fit into your team because of how much overlap its weaknesses might have with other members of your team that you've already picked. The name of the game is using powerful but accurate moves with this one. Healed up Scythe between the bio and right now, just in a little bit of off-screen time, and I'm starting to think that Ace Trainers are basically the Dragon-type trainers. Considering that they are normally super strong, but as soon as they're in the cold, they instantly suck, because that is not an Ace Trainer. One Pokemon that was knocked out that easily a warm bed and little elf. At least they're honest and don't false advertise back there. Uh, this cabin, 
I don't have thick fat like some Pokemon. Wow, elitist much. That's why I'm bundled up in layers of thick clothes. Incidentally, do you know what the ability of thick fat does? Yes, indeed I do. It halves the damage of fire and ice type moves. Yeah. Oh, you said it backwards for me. Yahoo! This lodge has seen better days, but relax, make yourself at home. I love how enthusiastic he is about this lodge having seen better days. It's not something I'd typically be happy about if I were living here, but hey, I guess he's got refined taste. What's on TV? Sinnoh, now! This is it, the one you've all been waiting for. It's time for Sinnoh now, your portal was hip and happening in Sinnoh. Here's a story on cutting edge of Sinnoh trends. This is Helena bringing you on the spot weather. Route 216 is taking cover in a blizzard. Some of you may, be bra it may brave the weather in hopes of finding rare Pokemon under these extreme conditions. Be sure to dress extra warm and don't fall asleep. That's the weather brought to you by Helena. Yes, don't fall asleep outside when there is a blizzard. Truly wonderful advice that you would not be able to figure out on your own. <laughs> I need to use a max repel here really badly. I'm getting kind of low on items. Part of me kind of wishes I went to that um, cafe and got some more moon milk. That would have been nice. You! are, believe it or not, yet another trainer of interest. Yeah, you didn't know that yourself. I always play for keeps, this isn't practice. We'll just see how much you're able to stand up to your word. This guy has uh, dust clops on his team even though we're not seeing it right away. That's all you want to fight him for. Once again, opted to heal, this time at the cabin, so I didn't waste a moo-moo milk. I I'm still kind of glad that I used it because for all I knew, I could have gotten into a battle without meaning to and we are out on Route 217, hey! Um, Maylene, word of advice, I would highly recommend not being barefoot out here, even though you seem very proud of that about yourself. Still, fashion pride only goes so far. Yeah, we're on our way to Snowpoint City. That's where I'm going too. If I use fly, I can go there instantly, but I'm walking for my training. I have no problem with this. I'm used to the cold because I go barefoot and lightly dressed. Achoo! Oh, th that was nothing. Really, I'm not cold at all. I'll be going now. Please take care. Maylene, listen. I know that you love the fact that you are always barefoot. And I get it, that shoes oppress the flow of air between the toes. But I just am gonna throw it out there that I don't think it's a very smart idea to just say, oh, I'm not cold. I don't care that I get frostbite just so I can say that I'm not cold. Just saying, not a very wise decision. Got another required battle right here, and if you can believe it, well, I'm sure you can because the sidebar says so. We have even more new, more new encounters on Route 217, which we will be going over now. Or rather, now that I look over at my list, I see that it's only one new encounter for this route, and I sound like an idiot all over again. Pokemon Mansion 2.0, this video is. Our new encounter on Route 217 is Swinub. After being mediocre for so long, it's got a new evolution! I always love saying that, it happens so often in Gen 4. It isn't hard to get either. You'll get Piloswine rather fast after catching it, but you will need a heart scale to teach Piloswine ancient power before it will evolve. You should have plenty of those, and if you don't, there's plenty of daily things, as well as the underground you can use to get them. Not difficult. As a Mamoswine, it's bulky, powerful, and got surprisingly decent speed. It gets Earthquake leveling up, it's all around a really good Pokemon. I guess the only downside I could really say is that it can't access all of its really good moves by leveling up and doesn't really learn much in the way of special attacks leveling up, but it's not bad. Really, it's not. Here I think we're in the long haul for the bios, when in reality I'm not even halfway through this guy's team. Well, actually no, I am halfway through this guy's team if he's got one Pokemon still at full health. But in this game with how slow everything moves, the result screen might as well be its own Pokemon. <laughs> I'm just trying to save face here. Looks like we didn't knock that out in one hit. Sure, burn me, whatever. <laughs> Have my attack power when you're about to get knocked out by the hail anyway. <laughs> I am so glad that the first time that something like this happened with the hail, it wasn't to me. Thank you for going down, Magmar. Have a nice day. My elixir grew to level 23. Getting up there quickly. Your heart burns as hot as mine. This is no time for pickup lines. <laughs> Back out onto the field, I've expressed a love for this music that plays on these snow routes. And Route 216, it's all right to play through. My love for that does not extend out into Route 217. Well, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but first off, yeah, there are ninja boys hiding throughout it. How are you gonna see them with that snow filter over everything? Plus he kinda hid in front of an item. Certainly is a brilliant plan, I won't fault him on that. But in addition to that, Sorry about the cut there, I didn't want to fight that ninja boy, I wasn't expecting him to be there if I may be honest. I was going to complain about that mechanic, but of course, like me, I love getting items, so I took the bait. 
What I was wanting to show is that this guy here, Skier Sean, he is a trainer of interest yet again. He has a Snover on his team. Something that you are not required to see. Something that you are required to see, but is not part of any required battle. Why do I word it that way every time and then call myself out for it and then make the exact same mistake the next time that we have a trainer of interest? I don't know, but the point is, he is a trainer of interest and yeah, you want to fight him. My Latit grew to level 24 in that battle. I don't believe it, my techniques were rebuffed. I opted to not show that battle for reasons I'll get to in just a moment, but as I was saying, my love for the music does not extend to, the, to a love for the area. Look at this! Look at that! Look at that! This is as fast as I can move! And it's going on this long! Look at that! I wanna know... What... Uh, I wanna know what idiot on the development team went, Huh, we have a game that is hampered by technical limitations that make this game run really slow. It's the first Pokemon game ever to run at a frame rate of 30 frames a second. It has the slowest battle system and the slowest movement speed in the entire series. So you know what would be a great idea? If a gimmick for an area is to make it run even slower. Who thought this was a good idea? Ever. <sighs> and to make matters worse, we got to explore this route. It's just a big, open, featureless field of nothing. And there are tons of items in it, as well as dang near every trainer being a trainer of interest. Case in point, Skier Bjorn, 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 Bjorn. At least I'm not saying Skier Bjorn, so I hopefully anybody who has the name will at least credit me for not saying Skier Bjorn. He has a swine up on his team, something that you will not see in any required battle. I got it right. Like, you know this area sucks. When I played through Sinnoh for well over a thousand hours across my lifetime, and I didn't even realize that I liked this song at all until like one year ago. Seriously, I'm not joking with that. That really is the case. A person, your sight. Thank you for visiting. A gift. You get a spell tag. Keeps away a wild Pokemon in this eerily dark house. Oh no, it intensifies ghost type. There I go getting those mixed up once again, but at least she corrected me on it so you didn't have to. But yeah, having played through Sinnoh so much, I never realized that all this area did was just make me despise it and never, ever, ever want to come back here after playing through it once, or however many times I played through Sinnoh even. Up here, boulder encrusted with ice, it is bone chilling to touch. While we're going through our featureless field of nothingness, using a dowsing machine in the poke, looking for things buried in the snow. I guess while we're looking for buried items, can she hinted at us that we want to do that, there is a new Pokemon that we are able to get. Even though we encountered Eevee all that time ago, this is now the earliest opportunity we have had to obtain its new ice type evolution, Glaceon. As much as I hate to say it, this is probably the second worst EV evolution. Pure ice type is not the greatest start, and when in one of the stats it specializes in his defense, that's kind of a bad combination. Much like Leafeon, its level up moves are horrible. It never learns ice beam leveling up and doesn't get blizzard until level 71. You're using TMs on this one if you want to take advantage of that special attack stat. Not that it's impossible to use, I don't mean to make it sound like it's as bad as Valeria, not by a long shot, but it is a little bit tough. I'm sorry, Glaceon, but on a more positive note, we found HM08 Rock Climb just laying on the ground outside of this house. Should we go into the house, however? While I was fighting my way through the blizzard, I dropped an HM. If I stalled the Hidden Machine Rock Climb, I'd be able to scale sheer cliffs. Hey, what's this? You found the Hidden Machine? Better have given it up for, a, for the lost. And you found it. It's yours to keep, my friend. Make good use of it. I like your honesty, though. Let me reward you with this. We get the Icicle Plate. Raises the power of Ice-type moves, as if we didn't get the Nevermelt Ice only one video ago. Two beings of time and space set free from the original one. That Icicle Plate. I found it under the snow as well. I'm no expert, but it looks to be of ancient origin. Even as old as the time when Sinnoh came into being. Very, very deep. Saw so we had yet another item ball out here. I'm just trying really hard to leave no stone unturned on this route. TM07 Hail. Already know what that does. Can be really good if you got a Pokemon with Snow Cloak on your team, but not really much else. The thing is, Hail, I think, is easily the worst of the weather moves to have on your team. It's just, nobody is going to have a full team of Ice type Pokemon. Like, ever. Ice type is. At least in my opinion, and from what I've seen in the opinion of many others, the worst type defensively to be out there. You have four weaknesses, three of them are pretty darn common. Plus the only type that ice resists is ice. 
Having six ice type Pokemon on your team, or even having like more than one ice type Pokemon on your team, it's hard not to have a multitude of really common weaknesses across the two of them. It's not like Sandstorm, where you can have rock types, steel types, you're a trainer, I was hoping you were something else. What was I talking about? With Sandstorm, it's not hard to have a team that is really good with that. You can have ground types, you can have rock types, and especially, you can have Pokemon that are dual type, including steel type, and have them not share weaknesses. Heck, I remember at one point or another, I had a team of all steel types that barely shared any weaknesses because of the way that their dual types were all matched up with one another. And I gotta tell you, it was a damn good team. It was near impenetrable, and people found it annoying to fight. Um, though, this one, Skier... Whatever her name is, I'm pretty sure is a trainer of interest. Not because of her Piloswine. Though I respect your choice in Pokemon and raising a Piloswine, it is not a Mamoswine, and for that, it shall be cut down instantly by the wrath of my blade. My Leaf Blade. Doesn't sound as threatening when I include the Leaf part. Now, she's a trainer of interest not because of Piloswine, but because... But because of Milotic growing to level 25 and trying to learn Captivates... Let me, let me get a refresher on exactly what this does. Um, opposite gender of the user, their charm to lowering its special attack stats. Uh, I suppose I might as well overwrite Splash for it because that does nothing at all. Now, you should have, come on, and I could also get your name. Come on, Skier Alexi, yes, she has a Glaceon on her team. Again, making her a trainer of interest. I'm sorry that I'm cutting around so much in these trainer of interest fights. Usually I like showing them on screen so I can just kind of talk about battle mechanics and whatnot while we're going through them. But this route is, oh my gosh, Glaceon's animation was so cute, oh my gosh. Oh, that was adorable, I, I love that. Just how it meowed and like rose up its head, oh. But as I was, I keep getting interrupted mid-thought. That's just the theme of what's going on here. I just have so much to say about this route. But um, because there's so many trainers of interest and we would spend so much time in battles, that's kind of why I've been cutting them a lot more than I normally do. So hopefully you understand with just how time consuming everything on this route takes. The movement is slower, the hail makes the battle slower having to watch that every turn. There's the fact that it's just such a hunt for items and trainers, so much of it. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to miss at least some trainer of interest along this route. Oh, you are one, I believe. If I can ever walk over to you, and the slap in the face is that he walked over to me at a normal pace, meaning that he's not affected by the rules of this snow whatsoever. Really fair game, really fair. Black Belt Luke has a Riolu on his team. If you journeyed all the way to Iron Island, had six Pokemon in your party, and didn't feel like going back just because some game designer thought it would be funny to make it so you had to have a free slot to accept that egg, you can fight one here. Achoo! Maybe I'll dress warm and come back. Hiya! I'm going to assume this guy is also barefoot underneath the snow of his battle sprite, uh, is being an honest depiction of him. Got Lake Aquity right ahead, and I feel like I really shouldn't have to dedicate so much time to talking about this, but some people have been saying it's acuity. I've heard both pronunciations. That's an actual word, and I think it might just be a regional thing. Some people have been saying it's acuity. Other people have been saying, no, he's right, it's aquity. It's just one of those things that I think differs depending on the region. But yeah, I think either pronunciation is all right. First required battle in forever, you got a Curlia, hey! Uh, it's a female Curlia, so it's not able to become a Gallade, so I'm not showing you what you might be like when you grow up but I guess I'm showing you what one of your many brothers is like when it grows up. And I'll tell you, it is not a good matchup for you. Really, it is not. There is that Night Slash. Had no hope of survival. Maybe if you were a fairy type, you would have taken normal damage, but that doesn't exist here, unfortunately for you. Milo Ticker to level 26, catching up awfully fast. I'm kind of getting to the point where I feel somewhat comfortable using it in battle. Maybe if something's got like a, re if it's got like a really good type advantage against something, maybe I will go for it. Baneri, I'll have you fight Bodhi. I haven't done Wood Hammer all video, and I'm just, I'm feeling that urge to just drop the hammer on something. It would feel awesome. Come on, Baneri. Be that thing that I drop the hammer on, especially considering you're such a spoiled brat if your base happiness and your method of evolution combined are any indication. So come on, Wood Hammer! Better not survive. That's it, Bodhi. That's the old hammer. 
feel like I'm just gonna start referring to Bodhi as the hammer at this point. You know, if it's a wood hammer, and the tree on it is the only part of it that's wood, is it like bashing somebody over the face with that tree? Because if so, that seems downright painful. And like something you'd see in a cartoon. Seeking, 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 seeking. Uh, we'll go back to Scythe for this, just so because Leaf Blade is faster. I'm willing to bet that it outspeeds me and that I'm not gonna get off my Quick Claw, even being more than likely higher level than it. Maybe I'm just overthinking things. Leaf Blade is just a really satisfying to move, to move. It's a really satisfying move to use all the time, because it just crits all the dang time, and my attack that is so high, and it just has a really nice animation. You know, about that. I can't be the only person that does this. Whenever I play Pokemon games, I don't know if you can hear the button clacking in the recording, probably not, but I like clacking the button alongside all the impacts that happen in my attacking animations. It just feels good, and like, the impact of the attacks are just being felt by me. Like, every time that that Leaf Blade intersects with my opponent, I always hit the A button. Maybe I'm a nerd, maybe I'm stupid. It's not like it's nothing we didn't already know, but it's something that I enjoy doing. Is there really nothing here? Wow, okay. Uh, Aquity Lakefront, ooh. Hey, Emil, what, you finally come along now? I guess all this, you know, Barry, I, huh. He did get to run at his own pace. Maybe he ran so fast that he ran on top of the snow and wasn't slowed down by it. I could believe it. Slow, way too slow. Listen to me, see how the rocks are all lumpy here? You can't climb those rocks till you get the snow point gym badge. Anyway, I'm off, Team Galactic, I'm coming for you. We need to beat Snow Point City Gym before we can even help him. Now, oh boy, uh, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure we skipped the Trainer of Interest down on that route. Because there's one more that I should have fought before getting to Equity Lakefront. I'll be right back. I will spare you from all of the snow walking. <laughs> Missed an item, a blue shard. Right on the very southern end of the route. The entrance to it is right down under the Repelsal Effect War Off sign. Right here. There you are, just north of that shard. Rainy days make me feel blue. The snowy days make you feel white. But the instant it starts to snow, I'm as happy as can be. I guess if you think of what being white is, that kind of counts. Oh, wow. Okay, that was a really dicey joke for my standards. I didn't think of that until after I said it. Wow. Uh, Skier Madison has a snow runt on her team. You want to fight this, because again, trainer of interest. Oh, and just to the north of her is a hidden item. Well, not just to the north of her, north and to the uh, west, to be fair. Uh, no, get, get the I Nugget! If there's anything more painful than the walking speed here, it is accidentally stepping one space too far and having to move backwards, stepping yet another precious square over what you would have had to in the first place. That is, at long last, every trainer of interest and every new encounter, but not every patch of slow-moving snow. I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm complaining a lot. Again, I really don't want to dislike this area. The music is great. Thank goodness it is just about over. Get an Ultra Ball right here, yet another, <laughs> wow, just so many items everywhere. There is one positive thing that I can say about it. A lot of really great items, so you do have that in addition to the music. We have at long last arrived in Snow Point City. After this long fought victory through the blizzard, we made it. And next time on Pokemon Platinum, after a nice long stay at the Pokemon Center, We'll see about exploring this tranquil town in the middle of all these blizzards. See you guys then.